Welcome to Galactic Grandmother, Heart to Heart. My name is April, and my special guest today is Ted Marr. Ted is an author, a psychic, a channel, a medium. He's the host of a podcast called Out of This World on BBS Radio. And uh, he and I met in 2017 when he was leading a spiritual retreat in Mount Shasta, California. And that was a very special trip. I met some beautiful soul family on that trip. We had some fun experiences. We meditated um, to connect with uh, Talos and High Priest Adama. And um, I'm very excited to get back with you, Ted. And welcome. I'm excited to see you again. Thank you, April. It's it's a beautiful it's a beautiful to see you again, and that trip was a very special one because of well we'll talk about that those crystals. Oh um, yeah. The yeah. energy. Oh my God, that was amazing. You had well, a crystal. Let's, let's talk about it now. Okay, I, great. I was gifted um, some very special seed crystals. They were actually um, obtained by a diver in a lake in Arkansas which I believe they were um, originally Atlantean crystals. And through a series of divine events, they went to uh, the queen's chamber in the Giza uh, pyramid and got charged. And then they were distributed out to um, people and they've gone around the globe. Personally, I, I've taken one uh, a couple to China myself because my oh. son lives there and and let's so during so I brought a couple to give to you on that trip would you like to talk about that I would love to that was such a special time and I think I even took one to Machu Picchu I did actually yes. you sent and, me a recording a video of that and even even though I didn't know I was going to Machu Picchu I, at the time you gave it to me, but that was the reason. But of course, the spirits on the other side, they can time travel and they saw that I was going. I, it was a spur of the moment trip in October, was September, October. They'd had, a, they'd had a seat sale on going from Vancouver down to Peru. And I've always wanted to go there. And so I bought the ticket. It was on like 400 round trip. Wow. And I got the last seat on the, on the, for these flights. And I went down there and then, and then I remembered what you told me about the crystal taking it to Machu Picchu and I thought everything fits now you know even though I hadn't seen it at the time but hmm. um and then you decided the other one needed to go out to the middle of Castle Lake in Mount Shasta area that's right that's right uh-huh that's right that was a healing lake and um there was a slaughter of American Indians by miners in 1856 there and it needed a lot of healing, that whole area. So I did some prayers and uh, with other people. And I brought that out to the lake, the middle of the lake, and let it released it. And that really did help heal a lot of a lot of souls as a result of that. But I remember holding those crystals in my hand. And the energy was just pulsating through my hand and my body. The, yeah. I believe that it was a special Palladian astronomical lineup mm -hmm. was directed right into the Giza pyramid. And, mm -hmm. and I found out later that um, there were some, um, quite a few people there during that time on that trip that uh, were pretty well known, but I won't bring up their name. <laughs> anyway, that was our, our first meeting and it, it was really, um, a special trip. I, I agree. I enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Um, in one of your bios, you had mentioned a mother figure that you mm -hmm. learned a lot from. She was psychic herself. Mm -hmm. Would you like to speak a little bit about that experience? Sure. I'd love to. I'd love to. Um, she, I, I learned later that we had apparently contracted before birth that she was going to be my, my mom as a, like a tutor. Like a, like a foster mom. She wasn't my biological mother, but later after my biological mother passed or had health difficulties, 
um, then, and my dad had passed, she became basically kind of like a, a mother figure to me, uh -huh. which was nice. And she taught me everything. Well, and my, my dad first passed away in March of 99. And after he passed, he came to Terry is her name. And Ted came to Terry and said, would you help Ted um, learn how to talk to the other side and communicate with me in an exchange? Um, you'll get spiritual advancement and we can help you out too, you and your husband. So she agreed. And so we kept up, we had that relationship, a beautiful relationship from 1999 all the way through 2012 when she passed away. Wow. And so then um, I learned, um, I learned how to do life reviews and I travel now into the, I go up to the eighth and ninth dimensions mm -hmm. on a regular basis um, nowadays. So um, I'm still here in third, you know, but I do travel quite a bit to the other dimensions. Uh huh. And yeah. my, my sole purpose, which I learned, um, it took me a long time, but I finally learned that I had been in Atlantis um, 12,500 years ago, and you were too. Actually, you were in Lemuria. Mm -hmm. And um, anyway, um, we were both a part on the on the planet during that time, and you were a priestess at that time, holding the light for Lemuria. But I was over in Atlantis, and I was trying to stop the insanity going on back then because they were trying to destroy civilization. Mm -hmm. uh, there were two groups that was called the Law of One and the Sons of Benal. And the sons of Banal were service to self, evil, darkness, <clears throat> and they took over the civilization and ended up blowing up the, much of the planet with nuclear and crystalline technology. And I was a priest all the way to the end. I, I was finally in the, I was in a temple and I was overwhelmed by the water coming in. And so um, I've been here ever since. I've actually been here 52,000 years. I came from the Pleiades but with the express purpose of helping to raise um, consciousness of humanity mm -hmm. and preparing for the ascension. So I've been here for 52,000 years are two Mayan cartoon cycles. One Mayan cartoon cycle is approximately 25,800 years. And it's a time it takes for this planet in this solar system to go around the central sun of the Milky Way galaxy. And every time it does, there's an ascension. There's actually three ascension cycles all happening at once now. There's oh. the, yeah, there's three. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's one that appear, it happens every 25,800 years. There's a second one that appears every 2,000 years. It's no accident that Jesus was here 2,000 years ago. And there's a third one, a smaller one, <coughs> every 100 years. Back in the 1920s in the United States and other countries, the Roaring Twenties, there was a lot of spiritual growth back then as well. So we're all here now, mm -hmm. we're all helping with the ascension, and this is the <coughs> seventh time this civilization has um, um, has um, gotten this far in the ascension process. I have to tell you, April, I feel very comfortable and very happy to talk to you today. So anyway, um, that's a little bit of a background on, on the ascension, but thank you for the, the Shasta trip was fantastic. Um, and I've just had so many beautiful experiences uh, from there ever since. And we still continue. Well, that sounds like a good segue into oh. March of this year. You hosted the Galactic Wisdom Conference with many popular psychics. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to know, was there a common theme, a common uh, bit of information that everyone contributed about our future, uh, the future of humanity and Earth? Well, I'm glad you asked that because um, we are accelerating much faster than even we, even Nostradamus and many other great spirits thought possible. Just in the, in, 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 uh, the late 80s, um, Dolores Cannon wrote a series of books called Conversations with Nostradamus, mm -hmm. where she, um, um, uh, she, Nostradamus told her that um, she had a group of psychic students back in the late 80s, 1986, and they time traveled back to the 15th, 16th century in France to talk to Nostradamus to help interpret his quatrains because he wanted to talk to someone, April, because his quatrains were being misinterpreted. 
Oh. So the three volume set, they talked about the um, what was going to happen in the future. And under the timeline at that time, 86, 87, 88, 89, Nostradamus saw us uh, going into the fifth dimension, <clears throat> ascending by the year 2038. Oh. And he also gave great details on uh, a nuclear war in the United States and in Europe, where many American cities especially would be completely destroyed and, and wiped out. And, um, but that didn't come to pass because people together called a heart to halt to the arms race in the early 90s. The Soviet Union fell apart. And um, by 2005, for example, um, many American cities were supposed to be in rubble and they from nuclear war it never happened. You know, it never happened. And this was after 9-11 and all these other traumatic things that happened, but we made it through. And even now, the negatives are trying to start, instigate a world war between the US and the Ukraine, the US and China, it's not going to work. People have to have that same reverence and that same impetus to bring peace to the world. And the message of the conference is that we have a beautiful, bright future all ahead of all of us. We have to hold that light. Think of that regardless of what, what happens. They, During the scandemic, they tried to put fear into all of us. Is there an, a timeline that, you know, any dates in the future we can look forward to? Well, um, under the current timelines, we are accelerating faster than even they thought possible. Mm -hmm. Under the current timeline, subject to change and free choice, free will, uh, 2025 mm -hmm. uh, is when the ascension process, well, there's several parts to the ascension process. You've got us going into the fifth dimension, but the fifth dimension is not a, a final stop because we have the chance to go all the way up to the eighth or ninth if we want. I, I think that's subject to change and also longer. Um, the Palladiums themselves are prepared for the long haul. And so far they've been away from their home civilization now for um, uh, th six years so far. Um, but they'll, they'll stay here longer if, if necessary. One of the things they've been doing since coming here in November 2018 is to help us as much as possible, but it's tricky because they cannot violate cosmic law. Cosmic law states that this is a free will planet and we cannot interfere. Um, they cannot interfere, even in a good way, unless they're asked and I've asked for help and they've given help to me and, and protection as well. Um, and I'm very grateful for that. Um, so if you look up, they have uh, 4.5, no, 5.5 million uh, ships and drones around the planet now, monitoring us, sending us positive love and light energy to raise the consciousness and to help us heal as well. The goal of the Illuminati, if you will, the negatives, were to kill off 95% of the humans on this planet and then have a nuclear war where the reptilians would clean up the radiation. It's very old and ancient technology to clean up radiation. And that's what their ultimate goal was, is to take over the planet. But it's failed, you know, because a lot of us are living and not as many people have died. People have died, but not quite as many as they, they wanted to. If you can affect positive change here, you can affect positive change anywhere because this is the toughest planet to, to do it. <laughs> um, there, is a, there is a message I got from the Galactic Alliance and the Pleiadians that uh -huh. after this is all said and done, and we're ascended and we've gotten along with the, actually there's a there's a timeline where we get along with the negatives and we all learn to live to love one another and get if not love one another tolerate each other so we're not fighting all the time mm -hmm. that will be a model for the rest of this universe to live on so civilizations won't fight each other and they'll be able to you know live with each other that's a very different kind of thing so um, i've actually i actually traveled to the edge of this universe with my Pleiadian brothers and sisters about three or four months ago, three months ago. It was in a dream state early one morning. And it was prompted by an old Star Trek film uh, segment where, where um, I think uh, Captain Kirk and Spock, they had taken a shuttlecraft and they had gone to the edge of the universe and beyond. And it's like that when you go to the edge of this universe and beyond, it's just black void. And then they pointed 
they they told me to look off to the right and off to the right there were there were um six or seven egg-shaped universes um with a band of bright white light zigzagging around it where you, they said you couldn't enter that i said okay but um but we're one of the seven universes mm -hmm. um, and there's other universes with different laws different populations different principles but um, but it was fascinating because I had I had never done that. I wasn't sure what I was looking at at first, and they explained what I was doing. So, oh, interesting. I... In my previous life, before this one, April, I was born in 1929 in Heidelberg, Germany. I speak German now, some German, and um, I was a member of Hitler Youth. I didn't commit any atrocities, but um, I did see quite a bit. And my girlfriend at the time was Jewish and um, she and her family were hauled off to a concentration camp Bergen-Belsen where they were all executed and after that uh, I didn't care about Hitler anymore and I was finally executed in November uh, 1944 in Berlin by the SS and when I was born in 54 10 years later I had a, a hole in my throat or my upper chest and that was from the bullet hole where I was killed by the SS the doctors couldn't figure it out, but that's what happened. Um, but it's a, it's a long story. Uh, later, I had the hole removed, so I'm, I'm fine today. That's a little bit of my background in 25 words or, or less up, <laughs> up to the present. So, um, You uh, were involved with the Hopi Water Project, mm -hmm. along with Michiko Hayashi from the Emoto Peace Project. Can you talk to us about that and perhaps give us an update? Happy to, happy to. Um, I, I learned about the Hopi situation back in 2018 um, because Dr. Emoto and Michi told me had had work, had visited uh, the Hopi and they felt like um, there was a fellow named Vernon Mesfeyasva, I believe, if that's right. He's an elder with the Hopi. Mm -hmm. And um, I found out that incredibly uh, men only lived on average to 44 years and women to 54 years because of the um, contaminated water supplies because of arsenic and, and radiation. Um, there was an agreement uh, uh, negotiated by Stuart Udall back in the 80s, a so-called liberal, um, and he negotiated this contract with, P I think it was Peabody Mining, if I'm not mistaken, that this mining company would get the Hopi water at pennies on the dollar, pennies per square foot, whatever, to do their coal mining. Well, um, uh, you know, uh, what happened is that um, 40 years later, um, after pumping all that water out, that pristine, beautiful, ancient water out, the water tables got so low is that they, um, that they became repositories for huge amounts of arsenic and radiation in the water. As a result, the Indians were dying off then what happens next the company leaves doesn't pay anything doesn't doesn't help the indians whatsoever kind of like slam bam thank you man take off and leave everything uh typical capitalism what can i say uh, nothing against capitalism but typical business to take mm -hmm. all they want and then leave and so um when i found this out i started uh fundraising back in 18 uh, for uh, for help fundraise for for monies for clean water filters for the Hopi, and then I, I paired up with Michiko and Liam McLaughlin of the Washington Clean Water Foundation, Martha Childress Natural Choice Network, um, with some Hopi elders, um, and wonderful people, uh, Ernest Tao, Vernon uh, Masvaspa. Um, forgive me if I can't remember everybody, but I started doing fundraising on my show. And the first, one of the first contributions we got was from a wonderful lady named Teresa in Idaho who gave $30,000. Wow. As a contribution to help get these water filters. So what Leon did, he worked with the manufacturer and the manufacturer produced these water filters to make these filters at cost available. I think they're 125, they've gone up a little bit since, not bad, 150. And the water filters themselves last for 30 or 40 years, 30 years, I think. They just need new filters every every other year, whatever. And it takes out all the radiation and everything else out of the water. So um, what was funny is that the, um, the Hopi asked the Obama administration in 2015 uh, for help 
because they were dying from the bad water and everything. And Obama refused. His agencies refused. And they, so the Hopi sued them. And the judge, who was also appointed by Obama, said that people did not have a right to clean water. Oh. That was true. It's all true. It's all documented. And so when I found that out, I said, the heck with the government. Let's just do it private fundraising um, because we don't need that kind of government. So we did, and we've been successful since that time. Go ahead. Um, there, there, I've heard that there is a grant in the works now to build a water plant for the Hopi and Navajo with clean water. I don't know too many details about it, mm -hmm. but it's privately funded as far as I know. Um, as I find out more, I can tell you. I don't know, but I heard through reputable, credible channels that that's in the works right now. So, but it's not, it's not government funded. The people I work with don't really want anything to do with the government. It's, and uh, how many uh, homes have all the homes gotten the water filters now? There's over 400 Hopi homes that have gotten the water filters plus a lot on the Navajo because they sell the share, share the same aquifer. Hmm. Well, that's I don't know wonderful. how, yeah. yeah so. I appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. It did help. Um, this is an ongoing project, though. So if people yes. want to donate, where should they donate to? Well, I would I would get a hold of me first, and I can tell you the logistics. I know several places. Uh, just write to me an email, out of this world, 1150 at gmail.com. Easy, just contact me, and I can put you to, if you want it, uh, the, the, the Washington... Um, Clean Water Foundation is a 501c3, so you get a tax deduction mm -hmm. for your contribution, which is nice. Um, and you can do it that, that's what I, but I can put you in touch with Leon McLaughlin and it, it, I can give you phone numbers and email. I don't have everything at the top of my head, but okay. you send me an email. Uh, or you can send an email to me at uh, out of this world radio at protonmail.com either way. Okay, thank you. Uh, now you're an author. You've written Messages from the Masters and mm -hmm. Journey to the Other Side. Do you have any other books in the works right now? There's a German book I wrote. Um, it's the German edition of, of this book, Messages from the Masters. Mm -hmm. And the German edition of the book is um, All the World is One. It's in German, Ein Ver Ein, Ein Sein. That's, that's the title, it's in German. Um, if you look at my website, um, uh, outofthisworldreadings.com, mm -hmm. and click on miscellaneous, you'll find the book there. Um, it's published by AMRA Publishers, A-M-R-A, -A, out of, out of uh, I think they're near Frankfurt, or Munich, Frankfurt. And uh, it's only, if you speak German, it's a great book. It's got uh, all the updates, all the messages from the great masters as an update. I published it last year in the fall. And since that time, I've also published a book called... Um, Journey to the Other Side, Talking to Angels and Other Benevolent Beings. This is a picture I took um, from my, a flight I was on from, uh, from Vancouver, Canada to Tokyo in 2017, 17 or 18, I think it was 17. And I looked out the window, my guides told me to take a picture of the moon, so I did. And this is an angel here, see the wings? And this, are, this is love, love orbs on either side of it. Wow. It's got, got pictures of, of orbs of Sasquatch, um, of Machu Picchu. This is, um, um, these are um, uh, spirits will live in rocks. Mm -hmm. They will live in trees. Right. They will come out. Here's a picture of at, at Mount Shasta. I think you might remember where that picture oh, was. Oh, I, I remember that. Yeah, yeah. Don't, don't give the location. No, I won't. We did a meditation there. Right, yeah, but you can see the smiling face. That's an entrance to Telos right there. Now that entrance has since been closed down. This is this Saint Saint Germain is at Shasta as well. And this is his light coming through over me. Oh over that's one beautiful. of my group in 2016. Isn't that beautiful? Uh-huh. That yeah. is. Yeah, there's also um there's a there's a lot of stuff here. I have a contact or uh, um her name is, uh, uh, what's it called? Um, it's a blue orb that comes through every once in a while. Jehina. Jehi, Jehina, that's her name, Jehina. And she's one of my one of my guides from Telos who comes in. Um, I have Adama as a guide. I have uh, 
the Telosians as a guide. This is a, um, uh, in July of 2018, the Sasquatch built a Peace Mandela just outside of the where we were camping. And they built it up sticks and then they put pieces of rose quartz at the base of seven different trees just outside of the campsite for world peace. Wow. And it talk, talks about how to how to contact angels and how to talk to the other side. It's just 20 bucks. Um, if you go to, you can get it on Amazon uh -huh. or you can go to my website out of this world readings .com and just order it there. It includes uh, a free brief reading. And also too, it includes um, a copy of this newspaper article. Um, this is um, a newspaper article, Kennedy shot dead, that was published oh. in New Zealand while President Kennedy was still alive in the United oh. States. Really? Yeah, because when it's November 22nd in Auckland, New Zealand, it's November 21st in the United States. And when they released the story about this fake story about Oswald shooting Kennedy, um, uh, it was actually November 21st in the United States and President Kennedy was still alive. Wow. So they screwed up. Um, and this was in Oliver Stone's movie. Talk about that in the movie. Um, in the newspaper article, it says there were three shooters, three shooters, three shots being fired. They talk about the grassy knoll. Um, they talk, they say that in the paper here, it said that uh, President Kennedy uh, died at, at midnight Dallas time on um, November 22nd, which was false. He died about I don't know, one thirty in the afternoon or so. A lot of discrepancies. So this whole thing is fake, 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 fake as a three dollar bill. So <laughs> anyway, if you want a copy of that, just um, send me an email or out of this world eleven fifty at gmail dot com, or you can go to my website out of this world readings dot com and um, uh, get that as as well. So and and uh, do you do readings all the time? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've been doing readings now. I've been in touch with the other side since November 1994, uh, 29 years. Wow. Well, that's good to know. Yeah. I'm in touch with you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, please do anytime, anytime, April. On Mondays, I give out the winning lottery numbers. Oh. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but well, you have to share the proceeds with me. No, I'm oh, just well, no problem. <laughs> Is there. Any, I know you do channel so many people, and is there a particular message that you believe that we need to hear for our, our highest good right now? Stay strong. Mm -hmm. Know that, that God loves you and you're being helped by not only the Supreme Being, but also by benevolent extraterrestrials. All eyes are on this planet as to what choices we make, and we will get through this. And we are winning the, the, we have won the battle and we're winning the war right now. God, originally, uh, Nostradamus, I think I said this before, that, that uh, Nostradamus said back in 86 and 87 that we would not, in 88, we would not uh, uh, evolve the fifth dimension but until the year 2038. But we are now currently um, 15 years ahead of the schedule right now. So, uh, and we're accelerating to the upside. So it, it may, you know, and the negatives are getting desperate. They're doing everything they can. The vibrations of this planet, I don't even know what the Schumann residence is right now. The Schumann residence is the frequency or vibration April of the planet. Right. And for millions of years, tens of thousands of years, the Schumann residence of this planet was 7.8 Hertz. In September, 2016, that almost doubled to 13.8 Hertz. And it's gone up well beyond that. Um, uh, and currently, um, the frequency of love on this planet is um, 528 hertz. This is a love tuning fork. And when I hit this tuning fork with one of these Lemurian crystals from Telos, blessed by the priest of Telos, love goes everywhere. I'm going to hit it now. OK. OK, that's one. Whoa. Two. Mm -hmm. And three. Isn't that beautiful? Uh huh. It comes it comes out. Yeah, that comes out. That raises your vibration right there. 
and if anybody out there would like one, just visit my website, outofthisworldreadings.com. You can order one. It's not very, not too much, not too expensive. So, uh, anyway, um, but we're all making a difference in the planet, and we're all powerful spiritual beings meant to create a much better and happier world. So, um, it's an exciting time to be alive. It's a tough time to be alive too, in some respects. Mm -hmm. because there's still a lot of negative things going on, still a lot of negativity, but things are getting better. In spite of all the challenges, things are, are getting better. Well, and, thank uh, you so much. I appreciate uh, the time and all the okay. valuable information you've given right. us. It was fun to visit with you. And <laughs> I'd love to uh, get you on again. Well, I'd love to come on anytime at all, April, anytime okay. at all. Uh, you're on you're on YouTube. What's your channel or what 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 channels yes, are you uh, on so people can listen to you? Galactic Grandmother Heart okay. to Heart. Yeah, Thank you. My my pleasure. Thank you so much. I appreciate you being on the planet and be, doing Thank what you, you do YouTube. for us. I would encourage people to listen to Out of This World podcast on BBS Radio. And Thank you, you take care until we meet again. <laughs> all right, my friend, you too. Take care, April. Thanks for all your fantastic work. <laughs> Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.